All right, so I'm reading this so y'all can read along here. Many salts appear to be dry, yet when heated, yield large quantities of water. The crystals change form and sometimes color as the water is driven off. This is because water was present within the crystal structure. Such compounds are called hydrates. A hydrate that has lost its water is called an anhydrous salt. For a hydrate, the number of moles of water present per mole of salt is generally a whole number. Because salts consist of cations and anions bonded together, metals are cations and nonmetals are anions, an anhydrous salt is often symbolized MN, where the M stands for metal and the N stands for nonmetal. Similarly, a hydrate, which consists of an anhydrous salt and water, is often symbolized MN dot N H2O where the N indicates an integer number of water molecules for each formula unit of salt. The dot between the MN and the NH2O means that the water molecules are rather loosely attached to the anhydrous salt. When referring to an unknown hydrate, you should use the notation described above. So we've done hydrates. We've talked about them a little bit. And if it's a known hydrate, if you know what it is you're working with, then you're going to use that formula. You remember that from last class. In today's in today's pre-lab, we don't know we don't know which one it is, and so we're just going to use the generic MN. And we can do some experiments if we were to do that later on. Today, I want you to think about though how to work with hydrates and how to do the lab, the work behind the lab that we're actually going to do. So when we do the lab, we're going to follow this example. I want to go over some things see if I can work this with the camera here. You're going to use, uh, who's done their laboratory? This is called a, this is a crucible. This happens to be a stainless steel crucible. And I did that because I got tired of students dropping the ceramic crucibles. And that is a problem and it creates a mess and it slows the lab down and, okay. So if you drop this, we just have to clean up the, the mess that this makes. And, we go back to using this, okay? All right, so this is crucible. What's this one? Okay. We're, we're going to have a laboratory equipment test coming up. So make, this is a clay triangle. These little things are made of clay, and the wire that's sticking out, okay, is not used to poke your neighbor during lab. Right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's the one I'm worried about there. All right. So this with the, the base and the post is called a what? Ring that's a ring stand. And this is? Y'all get that? It's, it's on your little thing. Ring clamp. Ring clamp, yep. Because here's a clamp. Here's a ring. And this sits and is assembled like this. So you have the ring, you have the clay triangle, you have the crucible, all right? And you got your crucible tongs, good? And you can use these a couple of different ways. The way I'm going to have you use them, one is you use it to pick up the crucible like this. This, is a, this can be a problem. So I'm going to suggest you use it. Notice how I have this up. You can work it like that, okay? And it doesn't go anywhere. This is a much more stable way to use the crucible tongs. We're not going to use a cover. That's a good question. We are not going to use a cover on this one. Uh, I want you to do some constant stirring, but we're not going to use a cover. Um, there, there is labs, and if you watch some stuff online, you will see ones that have a cover. And so you have to take the cover off and work and put the cover back on. And that's okay. We're just not going to do that in, in this particular class. Um, we're also going to have a Bunsen burner underneath it with a gentle flame. So that means all blue, but we're not going to have the what? We're not going to have the, the inner cone. We're going to keep the, the turn down. We're going to have some space between it. Don't let it go yellow. Okay. But I want, I want it all blue and I want there's going to be a gap between the two. We're going to do some gentle heating and I'll go over that again next class. All right.
just to be clear. All right, so here's what William's going to do. All right, we're going to show all of our work. And so you're going to work along with me today to make sure that we understand what it is we're doing. Because next class, when we actually do the lab, I expect you to be able to handle that. Does that make sense? I expect you to be able to go. And that doesn't mean from a safety perspective if you've got a question or concern. But otherwise, I want you guys to kind of manage yourself. And I want you to be able to handle this lab on your own. And I want you to be able to start reading questions uh, whenever we have test questions that look like this you can answer the questions and go through all the necessary steps. So we're going to go through this. First of all, um, let's go through this. Use the information to answer the question, show the work, include units, and put your answers in the blanks. On all these steps here, and when we do the next part of the class, on all these steps here, I want number unit stuff on every single step you write. If you see me write it up on the board, you need to write it on your paper. Okay? I don't necessarily need that with all the homework, but I do want to see it for lab work. And it's important that you label stuff. I'm going to do some excessive labeling today. I want you to do that today. Okay? Some labeling that is not normally expected, but I want you to see what it is we're doing. It's really important. Let's see here. William weighs an empty crucible and finds it to have a mass of 95.83. So somewhere you've got some white space. Um, you are going to be needing some extra notebook paper today, but somewhere in the white space I want you to write 95.83 is the crucible. Oh yeah, what units? My units are grams. Okay. Number unit stuff, right? After putting a spoonful of unknown hydrate into the crucible, he finds that the mass has increased slightly to 99.87 grams. All right. 99.87 grams is the crucible plus the sample. And what is the sample? This is MN plus NH2O. Or you could write it uh, just a salt plus H2O. Something like that. Something to let you know that in this sample, see if you can find a, a space for it back in there, those little bottles. Yeah. Something to let you know that the sample, this sample is the salt that still has the water in it. And this should make sense on the next question. He heats the crucible and its contents twice and finds that the mass has dropped to 97.20 grams. And this is the plus if I've heated it, what have I done? I've removed the water. And so, plus um, MN, or dry salt, or we can use our fancy Nancy words, and hydrous salt. Something on here to tell me that I have gotten rid of the water. We follow? Everybody okay with that? Everybody's written that down. Good? All right. So, I got this, this circled here. And then William is told by his teacher that the molar mass of the anhydrous salt is 74.10 grams per mole. All right. I'm not going to write that down because it's there and we don't need to think about what that means. We know what that means. What mass of hydrate did William start with? So I want you all to think about, there's actually a couple of different ways uh, to solve some of these. This one is pretty straightforward. What would you do here? Um, 
That's right. So I'm going to subtract the crucible plus the sample minus the crucible. So that's 99.87 grams. Minus 95.83 grams. This is that's just cruci that is crucible plus sample. Okay, that's going to leave me with what? 4.04 grams, and of course crucible is going away. So I had 4.04 grams of sample. Okay, and I need uh, today. Uh, you got to show me this. We got to show me this. Okay, show me your work. Show me your thought processes. Everybody okay with that? Let's go to the next thing. How much water was driven off from the hydrate during the heating process? So we're looking for the water that's lost. At this point, there's actually a couple different approaches you can take to figure out how much water was lost. All of them yield the same answer. What's one of those approaches? What's one thing, what's one way to figure out how much water was lost? Yeah, I, I would agree with that. The, the crucible plus the sample minus the crucible with the dry sample. So let's do that. We're going to write this off to the side here. So 99.87 crucible plus sample or minus 97.20 grams okay and so you, if I do that you can see where I'm getting rid of the in fact I, let's go ahead and just write it this way okay so yes oh sure or you may I, I don't know you may do better sitting there Is that okay? And what do we do when after we do this? What do we get? What? Okay. So 2.67 grams of H2O. Good with that? Okay. So my next question is, how do I get from grams to moles? Does that make sense to you? And you guys, at this point, we know the molar mass of water. Is everybody aware of that? You good with that? You know how to get the molar mass of water? You, you good with Okay. So I'm going to do this, and again, I want to see this work today. I want to see it every day, but I really want to see it today because I really want to draw it out. 2.67 grams of H2O divided by 18.016 grams per mole H2O. The grams canceling out, the moles on bottom comes on top. Makes sense? So if I have this, this is divide by a fraction, it, it moves up on top. Okay. Is that still the keep change flip? Is that? So the grams are canceling, the moles coming up. Anyway, after I do all that, what do I end up with? Zero point what? Does everybody agree with that? Is there anything after that eight? There, uh, there probably is, but I just found the, um, 
Okay. You need to give me at least those three digits after the decimal. It's actually one of these things that I've, I, I will tend to encourage you just to let the calculator hold it. Okay. This is not a part where you want to be messing with rounding too much. So we'll do sig figs when we get all finished, but we're not quite there yet. Just to be aware of that, um, you want a minimum of three at this point. You, four could be even better. It's not so bad if it's if it's like you know uh, one four eight two or something like that. When it gets to one four eight, you know four nine or four five, it starts getting to be where it can in, impact your next step. Just be aware of that. All right, that takes care of that one. Uh, somebody said it was one four eight two. I'm just going to write that in to help us out. Um, how much anhydrous salt remained in the crucible? So what's one way we could solve this one? So we, that is exactly one way we could do this. We could do 4.04 grams of sample minus 2.67 grams of H2O, and that gets us... One point what? Three seven grams of. I'm just going to put salt there, right? Well, it's anhydrous salt. What's another way I could have solved this? It's exactly that's another way I could have done this. I could have said ninety-seven point two zero grams. Crucible plus anhydrous salt minus 95.83 grams crucible. Okay? And if I did that, magically I get what? I still get 1.37 grams of anhydrous salt. Y'all okay? Okay. So anhydrous salt, 1.37 grams. And I don't know what it is. I'm just going to call it MN. Y'all okay with that? All right. I'm going to erase this just so I can... Everybody got this written down? One of these two ways to figure out, okay. How do I then, how do I get from grams to moles? Divided by what? The given molar mass, which in this case is? Very good, very good. Let's go ahead and do that. So I've got 1.37 grams of MN and 74.10 grams per mole of MN. Grams are canceling. And after I do that, I probably need a little punchy punchy for this one, right? What do we end up with? What do we get? 0 0.0184. Uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Let's try 8.5. Okay. Does everybody have all the, all the stuff written? I'm going to clean it up. So you've shown me your work at every step with all the little words, all the descriptions, right? Extra, extra. That's what we're being today. We're being extra. Bonus extra. All right. I'll go ahead and erase this. Okay. What is the mole ratio as decimal numbers? How many moles of anhydrous salt do I have? That one, yeah. So uh, 0 0.0185. And how many moles of water? Okay. That's my ratio. 
the way I calculated it. That is really ugly. Mathematically, that is true. Your math teacher would, would agree that, that that's a valid ratio. We figured it out. We've solved it. That's true. But we don't like that in chemistry. We like to see nice whole numbers. And so what should I do to get these into both nice whole numbers? We're going to divide by the smallest, in which case is this. So I'm just going to put this one down because I think y'all can handle that. 1, 4, 8, 2 divided by 0 0.0185. This is mole of H2O. And I'm just going to put salt here. Okay. What's that going to equal? Yeah, it's like 7.99 something. That's 8. This is our wonderful chemistry gray math that we can do 8. Okay. So if you, when you divided 0 0.1482 divided by 0 0.0185, you should have gotten something like uh, 7.99 and something. Okay. Mac. Yeah, good, good to point out, if you used more digits up here, you know, like if you left it in the calculator, you might have gotten uh, 8.01. Okay. And so both of those are 8. Both of those are 8. Y'all okay? All right, cool. So what is the formula? Using MN to symbolize the anhydrous salt, what is the formula? MN dot 8H2O. That should go right here. Okay. Has everybody written this down? We're all good over here? All right, I'm going to scroll. I'm going to erase this stuff and scroll it up so I want to make sure everybody's good. Now I want you guys, based on what you know, what is the percentage, the mass percentage of water in the sample of hydrate? Now let's just, okay. What's the percentage of water? How do I figure that out? So, so do I have the mass of water? Do I have the mass of the whole sample? So the mass of the water is, what is it? Mass of the whole sample is 0.2. This is a situation where since we have real data and we use that real data to calculate our formulas, we can just go back to that data to figure out what percentage of this sample was the water. So of our original 4.04 grams, 2.67 grams of that was water. And so if I do this, I do all the little punchy punchy, I end up with 66.09. Nine percent water. So most of the salt that we were working with was in fact water. So I, I, the question was, do I want to uh, preface my dots with a zero? I do that because it makes it easier to read and it forces the eye to see the dot. If you're just writing along and you do this and, you know, you hit, you know, I don't necessarily see that dot, right? And I may think, oh, that's just a, you know, just rub that off. Oh, now it's 123. Well, that's going to make a big difference in my calculations, right? 
So I use the, the zero because why, why else would I, why else would you have a leading zero other than to catch that, that dot? Okay, that's why I do it. I'm not requiring you to do it. I'm going to make a suggestion to you, though, since most of you are going to go into math and science, you're going to be working with decimals a lot. Do that or put stuff in scientific notation because that means you're, you're always getting, scientific notation is cool because I know I've got one digit and a dot and then something else. So make one of those choices. Um, I preface my, my decimals with a zero for this reason so stuff doesn't get lost, particularly when I get in a hurry. It takes just a second, to, not even a second, to write that leading zero. Again, I'm not going to force you to do it. I'm going to recommend you do it, though. All right. I got logic question here. Logic question. Why does William need to heat the sample multiple times instead of just once? Why is that? Okay. Following up on that, he needs to make sure what? Yeah, he needs to make sure all the water gets gets evaporated, not just not just the first pass, but all of it. Remember, we had in this particular case, 66% of that sample that he started with was water, and he has to heat it multiple times. And in fact, in our lab, we're going to heat it multiple times as well. Uh, pardon me, I didn't need to take this call. So I want to make sure that it's heated multiple times. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to heat it multiple times and we're going to stir it. Now, if we were doing this um, uh, and we wanted to really, really be careful, we would heat it very gently, stir it, let it cool down, take the mass, heat it again, very gently, let it cool. And we would just keep doing that. And after it cooled down each time, we would take take the mass and we would stop the cycle only when the mass stayed the same between two measurements. So you'd watch it go down and down and down and then it would just wouldn't go down anymore. And you do that so you can be very careful with the salt. You can be very careful with and you're not damaging it. Uh, one of the things that we have to be careful with is we don't overheat it. And so some of you guys whenever you heat your salt uh, it'll turn brown and that's bad. That means we, we've damaged it or it'll turn gray um, or uh, uh, it, it's going to be deformed. And so that means we've just heated it too much. So we've got to be very careful about that. Um, other than that, we should be in good shape. So I'm going to stop this recording of the pre-lab and we'll be ready for the lab.